Uh, for our next presentation, we have uh, the pleasure to have uh, Mr. David Colson here with us uh, from uh, GDT, um, a well-known company for those uh, uh, companies dealing with LNG carriers. Um, I'm interested to, to see what GDT has to say on the LNG company. <laughs> Thank you very much. The floor is all yours for the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Thank you very much, Leo. It's, it's a pleasure to be back in Greece, where we have the highest uh, number of LNG owners of LNG vessels. I think by the time uh, all the deliveries on order are delivered, there'll be almost 80 LNG carriers owned by Greek owners. Um, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit uh, about what we'll be looking at for the transport of different gases than LNG, and specifically for LN LPG. Uh, this is a short overview of my presentation. I won't spend time on it. We'll go straight into the, the details. For you who don't know GTT, we are a French engineering company of almost 400 people. We've been working in the LNG industry for 50 years. We were two separate companies, Gas Transport and Technigaz, who joined together in 94. Our main stock, uh, stockholder is NG Gaz de France, and we are currently working on around 120 projects, mainly LNG, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about the ethane carriers, um, FSRUs, and FPSOs. Two main technologies, two families, uh, NO came from Gas Transport and Mark came from Technigas. And if, if you just remember one thing about uh, these technologies for LNG, as the IGC code um, requires, they have to have two barriers, one to hold the LNG and the other to be a secondary barrier in case of uh, failure of the primary barrier. And if you remember that, we'll see the difference to what we're proposing for LPG later. Um, so. We have recently moved into other types of liquid gases. We had, uh, and Vatsila mentioned this earlier, we were very f fortunate, or uh, we worked very hard to get this order for Reliance for six um, ethane carriers being built in Samsung. And um, the membrane technology I just showed you had, had no changes required, um, even though there was a higher density uh, liquid. Um, with uh, lower temperature or higher temperature. Um, and the GTT technologies are adaptable to all types of liquid gases of different densities and different temperatures. So um, the, the materials are good. It's just how can we optimize the, the designs to minimize the cost for the, the ship owner. The LPG market, I'm sure you'll be, uh, you know a lot about this already, and there'll be more uh, on the economical side this afternoon. I'm not going to bore you about what LPG is used for, but I think the importance on this slide is to note that there are different qualities of LPG. The LPG uh, is often carried um, with different qualities in, in different tanks, and we need flexibility and speed of, of change of quality of LPG when you empty a ship and you uh, fill up the ship again. And this is where we like to think that the membrane could have an advantage. Um, obviously, a lot of LPGs are going to be coming out of the United States in the future. Um, uh, you know probably quite well the, the, the exporters and importers of LPG. And what we are looking forward to uh, is the larger scale vessel. So today, there's around 1,300 L LPG carriers on the market. But we've seen a significant development in the 70 to 90K range. Um, the very large gas carrier for the larger distances and the larger quantities of LPG which could be coming from America, for example, or from the Middle East uh, to Asia. And our approach for this, this membrane solution will be on the, the larger scale carrier. Um, we don't think that uh, we have the solution for the smaller uh, vessels which have been presented to you with the, the, the Type C tanks already today. We still feel that there's a lot of uh, possibilities for growth in the LPG market, so we, we, we are looking at it in more detail. Um, as I said, especially for the export from the United States, um, there has been a lot of uh, ship uh, construction in very recent years. It'll calm down a little bit for, for a short period of time, but we think again, in going forward two or three, four years down the road, there will be a, the possibility for further uh, growth and um, construction of larger scale L LPG vessels. Just a, a, rem a reminder, um, when the, the first 
LNG carriers were built in the 70s, 60s, 70s, um, there wasn't much LNG to transport. So they were adapted um, to be able to handle other types of uh, liquid gas. And this is just an example of a, of a, a membrane type ship that actually carried ethane LPG um, for a number of years before it was scrapped last year. So what is the, the membrane solution for LPG? Um, what, what we want to look at is how we can adapt our current technologies to um, the, the LPG uh, requirements. There's no problem in taking a, the current membrane system and putting LPG in it. But the problem of, of, of an optimized system for LNG is it's quite costly compared to the, the current market for LPG carriers. I've made, well, we've made some estimates here. We think for a, an 85,000 cubic meter LPG carrier, you know, the price is around $80, $80 million uh, on current market. And if you just took the current membrane system and put it in this hull, we'd be around 90. So that's not good enough. So we have to adopt, adapt our technology, um, optimize the technology, and also optimize the ship design to be able to be competitive with the, the, the current uh, uh, very large LPG carriers. So what is our target or our outline um, development? Um, we want to be able to carry all types of LPG, not just standard LPG, but butane, propane, propane, butadiene. Um, of course, we're looking at minus 55 degrees for the temperature of the, of the, the system, not the minus 163 of uh, LNG. Liquid densities of around or up to 700 kilograms per, per cubic meter. And optimization of tank geometry to be able to optimize the amount of um, volume carried in a ship. It's very important uh, if you have a certain size of vessel to be able to maximize the volumes. This is one advantage that Membrane has had in LNG carriers and we think we could bring that also to the LPG sector. Um, a, a type a C tank you lose a lot of volume uh, and the type A tank which is currently used a lot in the larger scale uh, LPG carriers uh, you have to have an inspection space around the, the, the tank so you lose some volume. So we're taking our standard or optimized uh, GTT C proven solutions and reducing the construction cost through simplification and standardization of the design. Um, and we feel that there are gains in operational costs. Um, we will reduce the, sh the ship, the light ship weight, and we could uh, optimize the length of uh, of changing the the cargo type. Um, the membrane system has a very low uh, thermal inertia, so warming up and cooling down are much quicker. So you can change um, from product to product more quickly. And of course, we keep the same performance as we've always had. So what is it? I told you that uh, the current LNG designs have two barriers. This design will have the unique um, Mark III uh, primary membrane design. So we will take that from the LNG carriers, which we've been using for the last 50 years, and that will be the barrier which contains the LPG in the tank. Behind that um, uh, barrier, you will have uh, redesigned boxes which will contain the uh, uh, glass wool insulation. So there's no foam here. So we're probably talking about having to have higher quality of foam and problems of foam being burnt uh, during construction. This is all contained in the boxes that, and so the, the fire risk is completely uh, negated. And we will optimize the foam boxes and the number of components to, to minimize the, um, the, 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 the construction cost. The secondary barrier, which will no longer exist, is in fact the hull of the vessel. So the hull will have to be constructed with a certain uh, quality of steel to withstand minus 55 degrees. And we will have a complete double hull vessel, which is not the case for LPG carriers today. So we have worked um, with uh, Lloyd's Register on this because they helped us uh, do a basic design study for a double hull ship with, with this new technology. And we compared this to a current 84K uh, uh, Type A LPG carrier. And what we found with our first step is that we could probably gain around 1,000 tons on light ship weight, which is quite significant 
5% um, could lead to some interesting uh, cost reductions um, on fuel. But also if you go through, through Suez, you'll pay less on the toll fee. And then we looked at um, optimizing the capacity um, by optimizing the tank shape so that we could get a maximum amount of, it, uh, of LPG in the ship. And we managed to actually increase the, the capacity from 84,000 to 86,022 cubic meters, 86,000 cubic meters, so that you're getting more volume, less weight, so more income, and less uh, operational costs. So to conclude, um, we feel there's some real potential savings in CAPEX and OPEX uh, on this design. Um, we have a vessel cost today which we feel is at least equivalent to the Type A design, and we're working more on uh, reducing their cost further um, to, to make it more attractive. And you have more capacity, at least two to 3,000 cubic meters more capacity on the vessel. Lighter ship weight, lower costs, um, and we think an important point, and which needs to be probably uh, studied in more detail with the ship owner and the, and the and the type of trade that is ongoing, is changing the cargo. It'll be quicker with membrane than a, a heavier metallic tank. We're currently working with uh, one or two of our shipyard partners to so they can actually understand the design and cost it more efficiently, and maybe we will help them improve the, the costing, uh, discussing with suppliers, and also with, the, with one or two ship owners to understand better what the trade uh, required is for these large carriers. I said we've already worked with Lloyd, Lloyd's on some ship design. They've had a look at the, 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 the design. Uh, we've received uh, the approval in principle from them this April. And we will go forward with Lloyd's and other class societies in the future to get a general approval of the final design. So we hope to have a final design approved for ship application at the start of next year, uh, which means that the ships could be uh, <coughs> potentially ordered then for delivery in 2019 which could be a good time for the for the up the next movement up in the market. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'll be delighted to answer them here or later. Uh, thanks, uh, David, for um, presenting uh, the new uh, design you have developed. Uh, are there any questions from uh, the floor? Yes, there's one at the time. Uh, there's one there, there's one there. Uh, so here. Hi, uh, yeah. my name is Theo Chagari from TMS Cardiff Gas. Uh, what would be the effect in construction time on the new design? And is this based on the new IGC requirements? Yes, so it's definitely been designed respecting the IGC requirements. Construction time, I can't give you a, an exact figure on that at the moment um, because we haven't had the development uh, ongoing with the yards yet. It will be a challenge to, to meet the, the same time as an integrate, um, sorry, an independent tank which you pull and push in the, the, the ship. Um, we would love to get it down to 22 months from uh, order, um, but I think it's gonna be a little bit more than that for the first ship anyway. So you, you're likely to have a slightly longer delivery time um, Thank you. than the, the standard ships today. Uh, do we have any other questions? At this one now. Okay. Uh, George Popper, I'd like to know Tomar. Um, question uh, from the temperature you mentioned. I guess you can go up to 10% more uh, ethane with this ship, uh, with minus 55. Yeah. So the question is. Um, what is your pressure uh, limit on the tank for harbor that you're going? So the, the, the membrane system is limited to atmospheric operation uh, around 700 millibars. That's the, the code. Yeah. So we haven't changed that um, for this design. So it's 700 millibars? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is that a problem? Uh, the problem is uh, if you go to... <laughs> <laughs> Should we forget about it right now? <laughs> The challenge is always the gas plant because yeah. when you are going to load a uh, high ethane cargo, yeah. in Houston, for example, then yeah. you need to uh, drop below the seagoing level of the safety valves as soon as possible because it's okay. high to time. Okay. So you need to have the proper 
let's say configuration that, that can can be the fastest way to lock okay. between the cargo plant and the cargo tank actually. Okay. <laughs> Looks like we need to talk to you. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the question. It's very interesting. A any other question? It's just that we we, just, we were working on LPG. So you're saying that you use LPG ships to carry this higher grade ethane or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I have a question if you don't mind. Go ahead. Uh, what is? Uh, have you done any study about the comparison of the boil of rate with your system compared to a typical Type A? Not yet, no. Okay. But it was something which was mentioned to me earlier, and it's true that if we can have a, our, our generally our insulation systems are very high performant for LNG. We've had to reduce the, the thickness of the insulation on, on the LPG system to, to make it cost effective. But in theory, if we have a, um, a better boil off, there might be some cost savings if you need to re liquefaction or. This is something that needs to be looked into as well. Yeah, that was my exact question, so yeah, you got me that. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, David. But we haven't done that yet. Okay, thank you. Thank you.